This is the seventh in a series of videos about database fundamentals. We're going to look at a one-to-many relationship that's unary, and we'll also look at the one-to-one -one relationship. So before you watch this video, you should have an understanding of what a foreign key field is. We've talked about that in previous videos. Before we create a couple of relationships, let's review what a primary key is. This is one or more attributes or columns in a table that uniquely identify each row in the table. In the data model, it would be uniquely identify each entity instance. So when you look at the attributes listed for an entity, you may already have one that uniquely identifies each ent entity instance. Uh, so, for example, a business might uh, assign an inventory number to each inventory item, and that inventory number is unique to each item. If you have that attribute, you could designate that attribute as the primary key. But if you don't have an attribute that appears to be unique, then you would create a field, an attribute, and you use it to uniquely assign a value to each row in the table, to each entity instance. And all the DBMS software that's out there offers some type of feature that will generate unique values for the primary key field. So let's look at the unary relationship that has a one-to-many relationship. What we have here is an employee in a one-to-many relationship to employee because an employee could supervise no other employees, an employee could supervise many other employees. Reading it from the other side, an employee, uh, such as uh, Bill Jackson, could re be supervised by a minimum of zero, as in he doesn't report to anyone else, he's at the top, or any one employee, Bill Jackson, could be supervised by a maximum of one employee. Now, his boss may have a boss, but we're looking at this from a hierarchical standpoint, so technically Bill Jackson would report to one person. So in a unary relationship, we have an entity that is related to itself. And we've already learned that in a one-to-many relationship, we know which side gets the foreign key. So it goes on the many side, but if it's the same entity, how are we going to do this? We're going to create a column in the, in this case, the employee table, and it will serve as the foreign key column. In this case, it would be something like supervisor ID. So in this example, the person table is joined to employee through the uh, purse ID column that we see here and here. The employee table is the one with the unary relationship. It has a column called imp supervisor or SUPV and it serves as the foreign key field. It holds the primary key value of the supervisor for that particular employee. So who supervises Eddie Mata, which we see in the person table? We would take the 1021, which is his person ID, bring it over here, or come to this table and locate that person ID, which means his employee ID is 5018. He reports to 5013. So that would take us up here to person ID 1016, which is Kevin Roberts. So Eddie Mata reports to Kevin Roberts. It seems a little complicated, but the fact is the database is going to do this extremely fast. So, who does Kent Thurman report to? We take the 1026, find it in the employee table, find the corresponding su uh, employee uh, supervisor ID, which takes us back to person ID 1019, that's Carlos Mata. So Ken Thurman reports to Carlos Mata. 
And by the way, this is the uh, situation where the foreign key field cannot have the same name as its related primary key column or field. Since both columns are in the same table, the foreign key is going to have to have a different name. Now in a binary or uh, relationship, we have, but it's a one-to-one -one relationship, the maximum on either side, maximum cardinality is one, which table gets the foreign key? We know what to do for one-to-many, but what do we do for one-to-one? -one? Well, the, in the one-to-one -one relationship, you can put the foreign key on either side. Just don't put it on both sides because that would be redundant. So in our example here, we have an employee assigned to an office location. Now we put the foreign key over in location because sometimes just in a practical terms we know which side to put the foreign key in. In this case we would have an employee table that might have uh, many attributes, I don't know, 25, 35 attributes, and it's one that is used frequently whereas the location table is going to be much smaller and it makes more sense to store the foreign key for efficiency purposes over in that table. So we've looked at uh, what to do for the primary key if we don't have a suitable attribute. We simply create a field or an attribute and we use it as the primary key. We've looked at how to build a unary one-to-many relationship and how to build a binary one-to-one -one relationship.